Hi, it's Mr. Adams from Midwood High School. This is a video on the comparison of atomic models. Um, the very first model that was um, we looked at was Dalton's model of the atom. And pretty, quite simply, he just said that the atom is basically a solid sphere, and which we could um, compare to like maybe a cannonball or a marble or, marble or a billiard ball. Okay. And subsequently, after that, um, Thompson... J.J. Thompson did an experiment using the cathode ray tube, right, which we uh, tried to duplicate in class, and he discovered the electron from that. So from there, he proposed a model of the um, the raisin cookie dough or chocolate chip cookie dough or plum pudding or, I don't know, um, blueberry muffin model if you want. Okay, but in that model, the raisins, okay, or the chocolate chips or whatever, they would represent the electrons and all the other parts, okay, would represent positive charge spread out, okay, the doughy part would be the positive charge, okay, and um, after that, we talked about Rutherford. Now, Rutherford did a very, very, very famous experiment, right, called the Goldfoil experiment, okay, now, I have that in another video, plus we discussed that in class, okay, but as you remember, um, he discovered the n-word he discovered the nucleus okay the nucleus in the atom and he found out that it had a what charge yes it had a positive charge and the electrons he proposed were just simply orbiting around that positive nucleus now we also talked about the fact that if you have right negative electrons orbiting around a positive nucleus right the question would come up as to you know how come they don't eventually crash into them, right, due to physics. Now, who came along? Uh, Bohr came along. So we talked about Bohr, and Bohr came along and proposed this model right here, all right, where we have energy levels. So N equals 1, N equals 2, and N equals 3 would represent specific energy levels in which um, certain amount of electrons could live in. Um... Also, with these energy levels, if you want to go to a higher, to a lower energy level, or, for, or from a lower to a higher one, energy has to be absorbed or gained, depending on what you want to do. If you want to go to a higher energy level, you have to absorb energy, and if you want to fall back down to a lower energy level, you must release energy. Okay, so we talked about that in another video. So once again, these are a couple of the models that we looked at. We had Dalton, we had um, Thompson's model, Okay, J.J. Thompson's model, we had <clears throat> Rutherford's model, and then we had Bohr's model. So these are the four models that we need to know, folks, for our upcoming quiz. Now, you should be able to do um, comparisons and contrasts between these models. Like, for example, you should know um, the change, you should know the experiments and what led to what, and what was proposed from them. Um, what we're going to do after we finish Bohr, we will go to the current model of the atom, which is called the charge cloud, uh, wave, or quantum mechanical model. Okay, so there's a couple of different names, but they all represent the same thing. Now, in this model, folks, um, it's a bit more complex than the others. Because we run into a new term called principal energy levels, the principal energy levels contain sublevels, the sublevels contain orbitals, and the orbitals contain electrons. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but I don't want you to panic with this topic. We'll take it part by part by part, and we'll put it together. But if you notice, right, all these different things are contained in the atom. If you look at this funny picture right over here, this kind of looks complex, right? You have these funny names. But don't panic. We'll put it together. Now, once again, the very first model is Dalton's model. Okay, solid cannonball, solid marble. Experiment was done. The discovered electrons. Okay, so the Thompson's plum pudding model came up, or raisin cookie dough model came up. Okay, we move from that to this model right here called Rutherford's model, mainly in part to using um, the Goldfoil experiment, the discovery of the nucleus, and from there we went to Bohr's model over here. Okay, he proposed specific energy levels and the electrons need specific amounts of energy to jump okay from one energy level to another or release in that in that sense. So as always, um hard work plus sacrifice equals success. Please know these different models and how to um differentiate them. Um also know how to basically draw them too and uh, do comparisons. Take care.